search. If you are a programmer, chances are, well, there would have been a time you wanted to do something and you weren't quite sure how to do it, so you would go and look it up. Whether you're brand new to programming or whether you're experienced, the truth is, that's what happens. We can't possibly know everything about programming, so we have to search. But how do we sort of make the best of this experience? How can we extract the most information that we possibly can? Today, let's talk a little bit about this, a very fundamental part of coding. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Searching. Well, it's a big thing, right? Like I said in the intro. And uh, first and foremost, if you are a new programmer, don't feel bad about this. The truth is, a programming language just has too many features, too much syntax, there is no way you could memorize it all. So don't feel guilty and don't feel sort of, you know, that you're not doing something right if you find yourself constantly going to search. It's not wrong. Experienced programmers have to do the same. It's a bigger mistake to attempt to memorize things in a programming language. You don't want to do that. Usually, if we happen to remember certain things, it comes about through a lot of practice. If you use something often enough, the syntax just sort of sticks in your head. We still did not make an effort to memorize, and in fact, you shouldn't. So I just sort of want to emphasize this point and get it out of the way. Searching isn't bad. If you search, it doesn't mean you're a bad programmer, right? Everyone does it. Everyone has to do it. So with this out of the way, let's talk a little bit about, you know, what's the best way to actually search and what we can do with the information. I get asked this question quite a bit because, you know, sometimes I tell people just go and look for help, and they would say they don't really know how to approach this. They don't really know what to search for and how to sort of extract information from the search. So, well, here are some tips and tricks, right? Here are some ways you can actually search and just to get to what you want to find as quickly as possible. Really, what you have to search for depends on your problem at the moment. And let's start with the simplest problem of all, and that is, you don't quite know how to use a particular command, a particular piece of syntax. Now, this one is the easiest to solve because all you need to do is to go straight to the documentation of the programming language. Let's say I didn't know how to use a particular command in Python. What I would do is I would simply say Python and enter the name of the command. So what you need are, you know, at least two pieces of information, the name of the language, very important, as well as the command itself. Usually, I like to follow that up with the word documentation so that that brings me straight to the official docs. The reason why official documentation is so powerful is because it basically shows you everything that is possible with that particular statement. It shows you every single thing that statement takes in. It tells you what that command call actually does under the hood and what value is being output, what value is being returned to you. So this gives you a very good bird's eye view of what a single function call can do and what it gives back. More often than not, this is enough for you to move forward. This is enough to tell you what you need to do to basically you know, complete the task that you want to do. In some cases, if this is not clear enough, what you can do is you can search for examples as well. So again, pro. So again, language name, name of command, and then followed up by the word examples. Usually, you'll find examples in official documentations as well, but in case you don't, well, look for examples from other sources. Sometimes we do need to see how a command is used, you know, in a particular context before its meaning really becomes clear, so searching for examples could be helpful as well. Of course, this doesn't just apply to programming languages if you're working with a library or a framework such documentation probably exists, and it should be more or less in the same format. There is only one major pitfall you need to look out for using this method, and that is to make sure you are looking at the right language, of course, and the right version. This can be confusing in contexts such as, say, Python 2 versus Python 3, so you'll want to check and make sure. Especially in the case of Python, there are subtle differences between the two. So yeah, make sure you're looking at the right thing. So that was searching for a command. That's all well and good. 
maybe you're writing some more code and you come across an error that you don't quite understand. Again, this isn't very hard to search for because in the simplest of cases, all you have to do is to again search for the language name and simply copy and paste the error message into the search box. Most error messages are plain English or they give you an error code, both of which are good things to look up. And yeah, as long as you're sure you're searching, you know, within the context of the right language, you'll be fine. You should be able to see someone describing the error as well as listing some possible causes. One thing I can recommend is wrapping quotation marks around the error message. That way, you search for the entire message as one, as opposed to just the individual words within the message. Though usually, well, if you search for the entire message, you will probably find something vaguely relevant at least. Of course, when you're copying and pasting things, you'll want to omit things that are specific to your program, to your implementation, for example, things like a line number or a variable name. You don't want that because chances are out there nobody has the same thing as you. So that will reduce your chances of finding something relevant. Now, there are actually notable exceptions to this. For example, recently I was actually writing a program and I found that there was a crash in a place that was not my code at all. In fact, the error was in one of the files provided by the framework itself and so what I did was I searched that file name along with the error message. And what I found eventually was that, well, there was actually an error in the framework. I had to jump in and correct something in its code. So just an interesting anecdote, right? Don't assume that your tools are working perfectly because sometimes they just aren't. Now, the past two use cases we've seen are pretty concrete in the sense that you have something you want to find out and you have an exact result, right? An actual definite answer. The last thing we're going to look at is a little bit less concrete. And that is if you want to do something, but you're not very sure how to do it. You are looking now for a general approach as opposed to a solution to a specific problem. This is the most challenging thing to search for. And chances are you'll get so many answers back that you may have a little bit of trouble, you know, deciding on which one to pick. What I recommend is to search for first the language, hopefully you've decided on that, and then simply name the task you want to do. If what you want to do is fairly specific, chances are you will actually find code, code telling you what instructions you need to call, and that will directly solve your problem. That of course is the best case. But if what you want to do is extremely generic, then you will start to see discussions. You will start to see, you know, people discussing just general strategies on how to solve that particular problem. And from there, you're going to have to pick and choose to see what works best for you in the context of whatever you're doing. Some solutions may even involve bringing in external packages. Usually they make your life easier because the library has everything written for you and you just need to call it. So again, you're going to have to make a judgment call whether you want to actually follow that route. Now, the thing with external packages is yes, they tend to make your life much easier, but you're going to have to deal with dependencies. Now, your project is sort of not your own. You're going to have to think about how it talks to this external thing. When you deploy it, how are you going to actually bring that external thing along? So there are all these additional considerations. Some libraries can also be very, very huge. So you're going to have to think about how that fits into your entire concept. More often than not, that feature can be implemented without bringing in that library. You're just going to have to reinvent the wheel and do it yourself. So you're going to have to weigh up sort of the practicality between these two solutions. Now, personally, and this is just my personal preference, I tend to favor the vanilla solutions. And what that means is, well, I don't want to bring in dependencies as much as possible. While that may mean, you know, quite a bit of additional work on my part, I see that as a learning opportunity. It's a chance for me to actually exercise doing something that I wasn't able to do before. And yeah, even if I end up with something that's cobbled together and nowhere near as good as the library, hey, at least I learned something. Of course, if ultimately what you're trying to do is to come up with production software, then this might not be, you know, the time to actually delve in and explore. Use a library if you have to. So when all is said and done, there is of course one last question. And that is, 
What if it doesn't make sense? What if I successfully find the thing I want to find and I have no clue what to do with it? Well, that could happen. And in fact, that will happen. I mean, it's definitely not going to be straightforward, right? Whatever thing it is you find probably won't be something you consider easy. If it was, you wouldn't have to search for it in the first place. Thankfully, there are usually multiple answers to your question, so pick and choose, right? Pick your battles, don't go for one that is completely over your head. Go for something that is practical, you know, something that's good enough to do what you need to do. And yeah, go from there. Of course, if really nothing makes sense, then you might have to take a step back. You might have to go back to the drawing board. Perhaps one thing you can do is to put your own project aside first and look for a tutorial on the basics of that area, that particular discipline that you're looking into. You can also turn your very specific problem into a general version and approach your learning in that direction. For example, if you wanted to build a web server and you found yourself you know, having a lot of trouble understanding everything that comes back from your search, what you can do is put your project aside first and look for just a simple tutorial on, say, opening a connection and working with it. While that will not directly answer your question, that will give you the fundamental skills you need to understand those answers that came back. To go back to my very contrived example, if you don't understand the basic idea of, you know, opening a connection between two computers and sending and receiving data, you're going to have no clue what it means when you read something about a web server, right? Since, you know, that is probably going to assume that you already understand the fundamentals. Learning programming and just computing in general is always like this. You're going to have to build up your foundations before you can actually, you know, climb your way up. So yeah, if nothing makes sense to you, this should clue you into the fact that perhaps your foundations are not quite there yet. So, well, divert your attention build up those foundations first, then go back to the task at hand. And there you go, that is how you would search for programming help in a nutshell. Unfortunately, things aren't going to be you know, straightforward, things aren't going to be really easy, but hopefully with these searching tips in mind, it will sort of guide how you actually perform your searches, and yeah, hopefully that will give you more value per search. Again, don't worry about having to search, don't worry about you know, your understanding not being perfectly in place. That's how we all learn programming, right? We learn as we move along with practice, with searching, with research, and just doing, you will learn more. And eventually, it will become second nature. Anyway, that's all there is for this Random Wednesday episode. Hopefully, I've given you some useful insights. But yeah, until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.